Dear friend, today we will discuss the anatomy of the temporomandibular joint. This is short term, TM joint. Temporomandibular joint, it is also known as a TM joint. Temporomandibular joint is a joint between the, it is act as a bicondylar type of the joint because head of the mandible, both sides, head of the, this uh, contacts of the mandible unite with the upper articulating surface here. So both sides act as a single unit here. Both contacts of the mandible articulate and act as a single unit here. That's why it's a bicondylar type of the synovial joint. Now what are the bones forming this joint? Look here. Bones forming this joint here. First we will draw the diagram here. This is the cut end of the diagrammatic arch. This is the fossa, the medullar fossa. And this is the opening of external posterior. This is the head of the mandible. Okay, so articulating surface are superiorly. Superiorly, this articulating surface is formed by the articular tubercle. This is the articular tubercle here. This is the articular fossa, which is also known as the mandibular fossa or the glenoid fossa, which is limited posteriorly by the ischemotympanic fissure here. So posteriorly up to the ischemotympanic fissure, this is the mandibular fossa, this is the articular tubercle here. So this is superior, the superior articulating surface here. Okay. Inferiorly, this is okay, so this is the articular tubercle and this is here, this is the mandibular fossa. And here Inferiorly, it is formed by the condyle of the mandible here, the two condyle of the mandible here. Clear? Now, okay, these two condyle of the mandible, actually they are elliptical in shape, here, like this, here, and these condyle are the 20 millimeter in side to side here. So these are the 20 millimeter in dimension side, anterior posterior here, it is about 10 millimeter. Okay, and you posterior here and the convexity is maximum towards anteriorly. Okay, here the convexity here anteriorly more than that of the posteriorly. And both condyle they are situated elliptical at right and right angle to the ramus of the mandible here. Okay, and the axis of the both condyle they are mediolaterally here. They extend from the lateral to medial side. If you draw the diagram, look here. Suppose these are the two condyle yeah. this will be So these are the two condyles here. Okay, here. The axis is mediolateral here. Okay, here. And if the axis of the both condyle passes and meets here, it passes backward here. Here. Okay. And this backward area, it, it makes an arch. Okay. And this arch actually passes just anterior to the foramen medium. Okay. So this is here. So this is the foramen magnum. So if if the arc is formed here, well then the axis of the both condyle meet here, posteriorly here, so it makes an arc which passes just anterior to the foramen magnum. Clear? 
So this is these are the two condyle here. Okay, here. Two condyle of the and these form the inferior articular surface of the temporomandibular joint. Okay. Now uh, these are the joint. Now what are the uh, now if you see the both surfaces here, both surfaces of the here, as it is the arterial, this is synovial joint here, both surfaces are covered by the fibrocartilage. Okay. Not by the hyaline cartilage, this is the typical in this joint. Both surfaces are covered by the fibrocartilage here. Okay, this is the fibrocartilage. This called the superior articular surface in the medullary fossa and the inferior surface of condyle head of the condyle of the this uh, medullary. Okay, so this is here. So both surfaces are covered by the fibrocartilage here. Okay, so really in the inferior ligament and here and in between there is a disc here. Okay, in between there is a disc, intraarticular disc. Here. Intra disc. Okay. Intra articular disc divides the whole joint cavity into the two compartments. Upper compartment, which is called the menisco temporal compartment, lower compartment is the menisco mandibular compartment. Okay. So the menisco temporal compartment, menisco mandibular, due to the presence of the disc here. Okay. Okay. Now, what are the ligaments which is connected to this? Joint here. The ligaments are one is the capsular ligament, and the articular disc. Okay, lateral ligament. Lateral ligament. Okay. Then the accessory ligament. Two are the accessory ligament. Fossa here. This disc is attached anteriorly 
So this is the lateral ligament. And this lateral ligament is important because this lateral ligament prevents the backward tilting or backward shifting of the mandible, head of the mandible. Okay, because when the head will try to go posteriorly, this ligament will get torn. Okay, here. So this ligament prevents the backward tilting of the backward displacement of the head of the mandible. So this is the lateral ligament of the Right, mandible is right. Clear? So these are three important ligaments. Now the two accessory ligaments are here. These are the sphenomandibular ligament. Deep to here, deep to the extracostimulators, the medial here, or we can say the articular fossa, deep below the articular fossa here. So this is the spine of the sphenoid bone here. So from the spine of the sphenoid bone here. Okay. So from the spine of the sphenoid bone, yeah. another ligament is called sphenomandibular ligament here. And this is the mandibular forearm. Okay, mandibular forearm. Now this, this sphenomandibular ligament starts from the spine of the sphenoid, passes deep to the neck of the mandible or medial side of the neck of the mandible and the ramus here, like this. And attached to the lingula of the ramus of the mandible. Okay, here. Yeah. So, this is the lingula of the ramus of the mandible. We have the mandibular foramen star, is a chip, a small chip of the bone. So, this is the lingula of the mandible here. Yeah. So, this uh, sphenomandibular ligament is here. And this is not the accessory ligament. Okay. And the fifth ligament or the Second accessory ligament is the stylomandibular ligament here. Here in this area, this is a styloid process. Okay, from the styloid process here, the stylomandibular ligament is connected to the angle of the mandible. And this ligament is nothing, this is the thickening of the deep cervical fascia, which separates the parotid gland from the submandibular gland. So, this is the stylomandibular ligament. Okay. So these are the ligament, the five ligament attached with the uh, joint or the temporomandibular joint. One is the capsule, which is attached with the periphery, superiorly so here the anti articular tubercle and the stomatal panic fissure, inferiorly at the neck of the mandible, then the articular disc here, okay. then the this lateral ligament of the TM joint, the spinomandibular ligament and the Stylomandibular ligament. So these are the ligaments which are attached at the TM joint here. Now, what are the relation of this joint here? The relation of the joint, if you see here, relation. First, anteriorly. Anteriorly, this joint is related to the yeah. First, the lateral pterygoid muscle here. This is attached at the neck of the mandibular fossa here. Is the mandibular fossa at the neck? Okay. Yeah. So anteriorly. And also another muscle is the temporalis muscle here. This temporalis muscle okay, is not here, like this, at the coronal process here. So this is the temporalis muscle here. Okay, second muscle. Third structure is the mesotric nose under vessels here. In this area, you know, the mesotric now come here from the upper border of the uh, this is like a pericoid muscle and then this ends here. Towards the here. Yeah. The mandibular notch. Okay, so these are the mesotric artery or the vessels and the mesotric knob. Okay, so these are mainly the three structures that are anteriorly. The lateral, this is the lateral erigoid tendon, muscle tendon, temporis muscle here, and the uh, mesotric knob in the vessel, and also the part of the uh, parotid gland here. Now posterior, posteriorly what are the structure related posteriorly? Posteriorly is related to the first the parotid gland. In this area, you know the parotid gland comes, so part of the parotid gland also passes between the extracostigniators and the head of the mandible here. Okay, yeah, so this is parotid gland and the this is the superficial temporal artery. Okay, superficial temporal artery runs just behind. Behind the superficial temporal artery is the auricular temporal nerve. Okay, auricular temporal nerve, and behind this structure is the external acoustic meatus here. So the four structures lies posteriorly: the parotid gland here, then the 
middle main superficial temporal artery and the auricular temporal nerve and the external acoustic knee enters here. So this structure lies posteriorly, superficially here. Superficially, superficially this joint is a subcutaneous here. Okay, we just due to the cutaneous. You are seeing here, yeah. Then we keep the finger here. So this moves. Okay. So this is the subcutaneous here. Only part of the parotid gland passes here. Clear? Then the deep or the medial side here. Medial side. What are the structure related to the medial to this joint? So look here. This is the articular fossa. We are drawing the diagram on the corner section. If you take this here, this section. Okay. Here. If you take a section, corner section, which passes through the joint cavity here, head of the mandible and the ramus of the mandible here. So this is structure. So we are drawing diagram in the coronal plane here. So this is the mandible and this is the foramen, a spine muscle actually. Okay? Yeah. And this is the yeah. The spine of the spinal bone. This is the pharyngeal bone. So yeah, this is the head of the mandible. Okay, here, this is the here the cartilage, fibro cartilage. Articular cartilage here. here. And this is the joint. Okay. Eucular. This is a capsule. Capsule of this joint. Okay. Capsule of this joint. And this is the Intraarticular disc. Yeah. Okay. Now, what about the medial side? If you go from the medial superficial to the deep on the medial side, okay. The first is the here the the pericardial muscle will come and then the acromion because the lateral pericardial muscle extends anteriorly and also at the medial side here. Okay? Anterior pterygoid muscle attached in the anterior pterygoid fossa here, for here, okay here. So pterygoid fossa extends on the anterior side as well as the medial side here, clear? So this is the pterygoid fossa of the pterygoid fovea here. So this is the little pterygoid muscle here, okay? Then there is the two loop of the auricular temporal nerve. It's the two loop of the regular temporal now. Yes. Okay. And for this two loop of the regular temporal now, this middle meningeal artery passes here. So this middle meningeal artery passes. It ascends up here. Okay. So two loop, the middle meningeal artery here. Okay. Yeah. It passes. And then the posteriorly here is a sphenomandibular ligament. I told you this is the sphenomandibular ligament, the spine of the spinal bone. Yeah. Before that, here, just draw the. This is the medial pterygoid muscle, this is the medial side of the angle of the mandible, and this is the masseter muscle. Okay, and here is the foramen, mandibular foramen. Medibular foramen here. Yeah. So, the spine of the spinal extends from the spine, uh, so spinal ligament extends from the spine of the spinal bone to the lingula of the here, yeah, mandibular foramen. Clear? So, this is the spinomandibular ligament, and this is the, suppose this is the mandibular nerve. Okay? This is mandibular nerve gives rise to the, these are the inferior alveolar nerve. Okay? So mandibular now. This is the, here, the two loops of the mandibular. Uh, this is the auricular temporal now. And this is suppose this is the uh, artery, maxillary artery. 
So these are the five movements are the one at this joint here. So we we'll just revise here the gliding movements here responsible for the protraction and the retraction here and the depression elevation here, the rotation of the head of the mandible occur here, okay, and the side to side movement here. Clear? The side to side. Now, what are the muscles producing this side to side movement here? Okay, here yeah, the muscle producing, and also here, this these movements occur here in the normal here. Okay, here. Yeah. The movements occur here, opening, especially the opening of the mouth occur here. Normally, there is a 50. Normally, what happens when the lips are in contact here? So, a small 2 to 3 millimeter gap is there between upper and lower teeth here. So, this is not occlusal position here. Okay, here. So, normally here. Okay. Now, when we open the mouth, open the mouth, normally it is 40 millimeter. Okay, around 40 meter. When wide opening of the mouth has that, it is about 50 millimeter. So 50 millimeter mouth opening up the maximum here. Okay, 40 millimeter normal. The normal process here. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. And out of 40 millimeter here, yeah. uh, we will just later on come. Out of 40 millimeter, 25 millimeter. Okay, is done by the here yeah, the gliding process in the upper compartment here. Yeah. Upper compartment here. Yeah. And that 15 mm is governed by the lower compartment, which is only the rotation of the mandibular cup. We will just later come here during the movements, in the, especially the elevation depression here. Now, what is the muscle producing these movements from here? First is the protection. Here. Protection of the mandible. Okay, here this is a protection of the mandible here. Okay, anterior movement. This protection of the mandible is governed by the both side of the lateral pterygoid muscle because lateral pterygoid muscle come anterior, it pulls the head of the mandible. So the protection movements occur here. Okay, here protection and protection is excessive protection limited by the here it is limited by the posterior fiber of the temporalis muscle. The temporal muscle is at least here. So what's happen? Excessive protection prevented by the temporalis muscle. Okay, so protection is done by the lateral pterygoid muscle of the both side when it come together, contract together. Clear? Now elevation, uh, sorry, uh, retraction. Retraction. Retraction is done by the posterior fiber of the temporalis muscle here. Okay, yeah. So temporalis muscle when contract both sides here. Yeah. So this retraction occurs here. And forceful retraction. Forceful retraction is done by the middle and the D fiber of the masseter muscle. This is middle and the D fiber come here. Okay, middle and middle fiber here, D fiber come and attach the upper part and the middle part of the muscle of the mandible. So when they contract we do the forceful retraction here. Okay. Along with the along with the digestive muscle also help here. Okay, here digestive muscle here. Clear? And the yeah. The genuhide. Genuhide is also responsible for the retraction here. Clear? So these are the retraction movements are done. Now, what about the depression here or the opening of the mouth? Now this is a very important movement. Depression of the mouth is done by the here, the lateral pterygoid muscle. Okay here. Lateral pterygoid muscle when contract here, the depression of the of the okay, the mouth occur along with the along with the digastric muscle okay, here and the genuhide okay, and the mylohyde. These muscles also help in the here the depression. Okay. During the depression what happen? The hyoid bone, hyoid bone will be stable here. Hyoid bone is stable by the infrared muscle, by the this digastric muscle, okay, genuhide and the mylohyde pull the mandible downward here. So it also help in the depression or the opening of the mouth along with the lateral pterygoid muscle here. Clear? Now how this depression occur? Depression occur here in the three phases here. First the mandible rotated in the lower compartment. Okay? Then the head of the mandible along with the articular disc here moves anteriorly here. Slips in the upper compartment. And then last is the head move rotates here. Okay? Here. So what's happen now? During the depression, initially the rotation occurs here. Okay. Then the gliding movement occurs. Okay. So during the gliding movement, what's happen? 
the whole of the disc reaches anteriorly. Majority of the disc reaches anteriorly. So what's happen? Now this anterior, this articular tubercle prevent the further gliding movement here. Okay. So what's happen now? In the last phase, the head of the mandible rotated again in the lower in the lower compartment. So in this fashion, the opening of the mouth occur. Clear? So this is the typical the, uh, the this is opening of the mouth occur of the operation. Okay. Now what about the elevation movement? Elevation is done by the three muscles. These are the temporalis muscle, okay? the lateral, this mesital muscle and the medial telegoid muscle. These muscles here, they are the powerful anti-gravity muscle because they have to elevate the mandible against the gravity here. So this muscle pulls the, here the mandible superiorly, so that's why that the prominences are seen here. And there is a coronary process here. Literally, here the rough impression on the lateral side of the mandible here, and on the medial side of the angle of the mandible, the rough impression on the angle of the mandible on the medial side. This is the attachment of the medial telegoid muscle here. So, uh, here, so elevation is done by the these three muscles, and elevation is the reverse of the depression here. In the elevation, what happen? First, the rotation of the mandible occur, then the gliding occur posteriorly, and again the rotation. So this is the elevation movement here. Okay. Now what about the uh, last movement, the fifth movement, side to side movement. Okay. The side to side movement here is done by the here at the gliding and the rotation here. Okay. What about the gliding? Gliding occur in the one joint here, like this, this glide. And the posteriorly this opposite uh, joint, opposite side of this here joint rotates posteriorly here. Okay. So this is suppose this is the this is side to side movement. Okay, like this. Yeah. So in this as a one joint here, the main head of the mandible, the one joint cavity here glides anteriorly here, and the opposite joints passes backward posteriorly. Then again it passes posteriorly, and the upper joints, upper, opposite mandible head of the mandible comes anteriorly. So this is the gliding movement center like this. Okay, in this picture. So this movement is done is by the lateral medial pterygoid muscle of the one side alternatively. So the one side of the medial cone muscle contract, opposite side of the lateral cone, uh, lateral pterygoid muscle contract here. So this medial lateral pterygoid muscle alternatively they contract, so they do the, they are the chain movement here. Clear? So this is the chain movement here. Now, I, I told you that here the opening of the mouth here, in the opening of the mouth 40 millimeter opening occur here. Clear? Yeah. And out of 40 millimeter here, 25 millimeter. Okay. 25 millimeter here, then by the sliding movement at the upper compartment for the menisco temporal compartment and 15 millimeter by the rotation of the here, the head of the mandible in the lower compartment. Clear? So this is here. And the and the side to side movement here, side to side movement is about 10, here, it is 10 millimeter movements of the side to side here, okay, here. during uh, elevation here, only 10 millimeter, means mouth rotates only 10 millimeter, come here, okay, here. so this is the side to side of the chin movement here, okay, now, I think this is all about the movement here, now, uh, what are the factors? Okay, factors which stabilize this joint. Okay, this stabilizes the factor here. The first factor is the articular surface. In the articular surface, the anterior tubercle here. Anterior tubercle prevents the head of the mandible to come anteriorly here. Okay, this is an important factor, the articular factor which prevents the here stabilizes the joint. Okay, so first is the articular tubercle here. Okay, here this one. Okay, second is the here the muscle. Okay, uh, before the muscle there comes the ligament here. Okay, ligament here. Here the lateral, I told you the lateral temporomandibular ligament. This lateral temporomandibular ligament prevents the backward shifting of the head of the mandible. Because when the mandible, head of the mandible tries to go posteriorly, this ligament comes here. So backward tilt of the head of the mandible is prevented by the, this lateral temporomandibular ligament here. And the muscle, what about the muscle? Muscle is here, I told you, the temporalis muscle here. Temporalis muscle 
prevent the excessive protrusion of the mandible here. Yeah. The excessive protrusion of the mandible and the lateral pterygoid muscle. Lateral pterygoid muscle it comes from the anterior side. It also prevents the backward the excessive retraction of the mandible here. Yeah. Okay, here. Yeah. So the two muscles here, yeah, uh, this temporalis prevent the anterior, the protrusion of the muscle, excessive protrusion of the uh, excessive protrusion of the joint, and the temporalis prevent the excessive retraction. Okay, along with the lateral temporomandibular joint here. Yeah. So this is I think all about the joint here. Now, what about the clinical aspect of this joint? Okay. Clinical aspect of this joint here, there is a sometimes a dislocation of the joint occur. Okay, dislocation. And the dislocation of the joint occur during the here the opening of the mouth. When the excessive opening of the mouth occur here, due to what what's happened is the pull of the spasm of the lateral pterygoid muscle occur here. So due to the spasm lateral pterygoid muscle here, mandible comes into like this here in the infratemporal fossa here. Okay. So this uh, is occur, this uh, uh, dislocation occur in the uh, opening of the mouth, which is known as the unstable condition of the mouth. In the stable condition of the mouth, it cannot be displaced anteriorly, but there is a fracture of the mandible occur here. When the blow is given here, the lateral side of here, so what's happened during the close position here, close back position here, so head of the, this neck of the mandible is broken here during the blow here. So fracture of the neck of the mandible occur in the close position, while the displacement of the mandibular head occur in the open position. Okay, here. Yeah. Now what is here, the op op opening position here, yeah, look here, when the displacement occur here, so what's happened, the surgeon keep the finger here, in the last molar tooth, depress the mandible here, slightly here, uh, not the surface, it, it, it do the back of the mandible and the elevate the mandible here, it give the pressure, it shift the, presses the mandible posteriorly here and then the elevate here, so this is the process how the mandibular displaced mandibular head of the mandibular head keep in normal, normal position here. Yeah. So this is the clinical aspect of this TM joint. So this is all about the temporomandibular joint. Okay.